Hey, 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 it's me, your favorite nigga, mine, Mo Love, from the Man Cave, on the depths of my blue, my way. What y'all want to hear tonight? Nothing. <laughs> I don't blame me. We here in the Man Cave. Temperatures and dropped a little bit where it's about 80 something, 90 degrees. And uh, so far, I managed to lose a few pounds. The last time I told you I was 211, but shit, I'm 208 pounds. The last time I made the video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. We still, we still here maintaining. Ain't nothing gonna change. You dig? Ain't maintaining, ain't gonna nothing gonna change, man. It might not quit, but I ain't giving it up either. You hear me? Shit. <laughs> I ain't going either. You see? Y'all just hold on for a minute. Then we can, might talk about what we might not talk about. What is it? And talked about. Harold spins like a damn dog. Yeah, hold on. Check it out, Errol. <laughs> you, you can say, uh, you can tell, you can, you can tell, uh, Terrence, <laughs> say, nigga, quit front like you ain't never been knocked out before. <laughs> Shit. Say, your old lady knocks your ass out. Your old lady knocked your ass out. And undisputed, you did six times. All them children, that means <laughs> you gave it up, why? <laughs> she knocked you out with that. You know what? Six times undisputed. Mm-hmm. I like you ain't been knocked out, nigga. <laughs> Check this out, man. I never looked at this woman up close. But to show some pictures of her, right? Oh, shit. They talking about she fat, man. Come on. She should sure low to the ground. All right. You got a pretty face. But you can look at her and tell why she's keep going back to shit. <laughs> Wouldn't you? And the nigga better not make a move. <laughs> Boy, that's six figures a piece right there. And then she want hers. You got to keep coming. Keep coming. 
with the alligator mind. <laughs> That's common law. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, don't say shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn it. Quiet. I'm getting a bit greasy. Get ready to come back to the ring on December. Tell him, Errol, so, so you can finish kicking his ass. <laughs> You can call you can call Errol Spence said you can call me anything, but don't call me no you can't call me no show. It's a nigga. I'm really a two hundred pound nigga. And I'm trying to make the weight of a hundred and forty seven pounds. Now, bring your ass to the ring, bro. Come to work, get out from under them draws. <laughs> Come on, man. Good boy. Bust your eye. Swollen nose. Toe up lip. They ain't gonna stop me. Boy! I said, I almost whooped the ref ass over in the corner. You seen me telling him, man, what the fuck you doing? He said, you hit me, man, I'm gonna sue you. <laughs> that was the only reason why I lost that one. I'm gonna slap the shot you. I should slap the shot the ref. Mm -hmm. Since the pit, both of my fighters against one another. Okay. Now I have been all the way around. I said the same thing. Arrow, back up out that boy. Back up out that boy. <laughs> That's what AB you say. All right, Arrow, back up out that boy. Back up out that boy. Everybody got an opinion. I to swept them down. They ain't going to buy it. Uh, they ain't going to pay per view. They ain't going to watch it. That's a lie. But you got guts enough to go back up in there, right? Even under certain short notice. They're going to be right there. See what happens. Here's my prediction. <laughs> I know my main man, Errol. He's stubborn on his word. He's stubborn. If he say, fuck it, let's fight, we're going to fight. And fuck it, we're going to fight. Get back in there. And he real does what they say. Mm -hmm. He gonna make this fight really slow. He gonna move his ass out of the way. He ain't gonna be there for you this time. 
right? I'm gonna make it look. But no one ever said this. I'm probably be the first one to say it to you, Arrow. On your level. It takes a man to whoop another man ass, right? But it also takes a man to take an ass whooping from a whole nother man. You dig what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You pass them out, can't take them. Else they took the Michael G. Yes, you did. You took that. Took that licking like a G-bone. You so said, I ain't got no excuse. So don't blame my coach. Don't blame my woman. Don't blame nobody in my camp. It's all on me, babe. It's on me, baby. I what he said. Okay, this time probably ain't getting well. But you always miss something. And you see something different. The more and more you watch uh, Errol Spence and Bud Crawford tape. In that first fight, I mean, first round, Errol came out there doing his thing, right? He's throwing his jab, right? <clears throat> then he got over in that corner. And Bud put them gloves up like that. And he came with that whop. Whop! He hit him upside that goddamn head. It was right past the glove, right in the air. That's the reason why Bud came out that second time. <laughs> boy, he hit him my goddamn ear. Goddamn boy. Hit him my motherfucking ear. Mm-hmm. And then Bud turned it on. Next thing you know. <laughs> you speed up just a little bit. This way you can tell it speeds up a little bit. <laughs> it don't gotta be. Otherwise the fight be over, right? That one sock did it. Now right there, turn Bud on. Now, for the mistakes, Errol's man. You was fighting like you was really big. Whoa, whoa, like you a heavyweight. And them goddamn, them shits hurt. Right? But he was already ready for you. Put them gloves up. Already ready for you. And uh, you was reaching. You was reaching more than anything else. So that kind of left you open. A lot of times you've seen that. You had to legs too cocked open. And you didn't really get in striking distance. Well, you was like. <laughs> you can see that shit coming. That was one of the first mistakes. And you was countering. He was hitting you. 
and you got him this way, right? But you were supposed to turn back into him real fast before he could react to hit you. You hit the goddamn ribs. The first thing he would have did was say, huh? Because his glove was up this way. And when he swooped, when he swooped at you, right? It just kind of glanced off your shoulder, but right up your neck. When it went that way, you should have been, you know, you could have paid them. But by this time, you know, Bud's punches is... They potent. He putting some dope on you now. Putting some medicine on. Those are all the things you gotta remember. Going into the next fight. With him. Distance. Work on a combination. And not one, two. One, two, three. And then you might put your glove up. I'm going to tell you something else. I, I don't know. Most people are stuck on. They say, get rid of your coach, Derek James. And everybody's arguing about And then when Floyd Jr. mentions, come here, let me let me talk to you, let me talk to you. You like, everybody like, nah. Fuck Floyd. He ain't nobody. He ain't gonna change nothing to nobody. Let me tell you something. <laughs> it's like that's part of your issue. If Floyd say come here or Roy Jones Jr. say uh, let me talk to you, man. Let me just, let me holler. Come on, man. Let me holler at you. Why you got such a problem with me? They veterans in the game. They done won a lot, but they done lost a few, too. They see something. You know. These are the things in your treasure chest in your life. You understand that? Don't don't just wave them off. You know, if Derrick James got a problem, then fucking get his bag and leave. Go go where you was at when Go where the fuck you was at when they did tape you in the gym when your ass was supposed to be uh, been on the pads or on the speed bag and shit like that. And on that other little Wayne thing with the with the string and a little bitty ball is almost size of a regular head on somebody and they move all around like this right here that you don't need to be doing the whole bunch. I had to learn that shit. I went in the gym and like, what the fuck is this? And you hit it. It'll spin around off your glove or whatever the fuck until you learn what, what to really do with it. Right? So they show you that pat 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 right pat 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 right swoop you gonna move your fucking head or not hmm then you see what I'm saying go straight for your head right where it's at ain't just gonna touch your ain't just gonna touch your shoulder you gonna move your damn head Right? 
That's teaching you to slip punch. Here it comes. Here it comes. Right? And you're supposed to pay attention to how long his jabs stay out there. When you, when you move, ooh, right? You hit that bit. You might swoop again, ooh, right? Move your head again. Yeah, I probably, man, let me tell you something. Yeah. One day I'll take you and I'll show you I do know the fundamentals. I've learned it. That lots of fights. A lot of folks be poking out like, man, fuck you, nigga. I need money. This ain't just for no. You got money? I'm going to take your ass and go on. I'm going to show for. Let somebody else whoop your motherfucking ass for you. In front of the bitches. You don't make no side for our battle then come over and start some shit with me. And you don't make me move my million dollar hands. These motherfuckers work, you see. Pay me, bitch. Then get the fuck out of my. Talking. Get one of them shiny things in your motherfucking face for you, boy. You go on then, right? When you get done, you might as well just get rid of your hair because you ain't nothing. Fucking rat nigga, anyway. And back to the nature of hair. These little fucking homies over there for a little while. <clears throat> uh, Errol. These little fucking homies. I don't care if it's yellow breed because he don't want to be bothered with them folks. They want to talk to you. They man enough to tell him, huh? Yeah, I bought your music. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty good. Keep on doing what you're doing. Come on, Errol. I need to talk to you. Yeah, I need to, I need to talk to you. You go head on. And then next thing you know, security... Go on here and rest that. And then he be back over here blogging. Oh man, that's fucked up, bro. Don't get him, man. You, you gotta be that nigga, you man. Yeah, well, you ain't no boxer. You just a rapper. You'll get your ass beat. That's the confidence going by. You've been cool. You stumble with big dogs now. You ain't got time to play that shit. Quit eating them little fruities. Quit taking that little tope of that bullshit. Hey, yo. You don't owe nobody nothing. Just because some bitch put $2 on, on bet. He might have put $2 on you and put uh, 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 $12. On butt. You want to put that on? I'm kind of like, man, I love my money on you, man. They talk about all the time. Motherfuckers show a lot of money and big old stack of money. Paramount Pictures. Mm hmm. I like them. Let me tell you, let me show you something. On my social media platform, my uh, uh, my profile, you see me with a little rings on my finger, a little gold looking watch, right? <clears throat> and the one watch that I got hanging got a bunch of diamonds in it. Them ain't nothing but costume diamonds. I mean, real, that come off uh, some jewelry uh, where it had the fire and ice. You know, the kind when you walk off in the goddamn uh, pawn shop, they right there. And you be like, ooh, 
Yeah, but they ain't real. It's got some kind of little uh, reflective uh, shit on it that you can scratch like a scratch off. Scratch it right off, it'll come off. And it's just nothing but glass. Not a real diamond. But they got the real shit. You understand me? Right for the cheap. Right? Well, I have some old cheap ass jewelry. I had a bunch of them. I scratched all the little bullshit off to make it look right. It's real done, but it wasn't. And I put in one of them old watches where the damn, uh, I took the, the guts out of it. It wasn't nothing but the, but the band. It's nothing but the band. And, uh, because the inside, the watch corroded and everything like that. You buy them old goddamn old cheap ass watches, man, you know. In two days, that motherfucker ain't no good for nothing. It'd be water in it. And you ain't immersed in, no, in nothing. Just the heat or whatever. And then all of a sudden, moisture will be in there. Next thing you know, in the third or fourth day, wearing it every day. The batteries, the, you know, the hand will start trying to work and they go back the other way. Next thing you know, within a week or so, go to change the battery because it stopped <clears throat> running. And you look at inside, it's corroded. Water and everything is in there. It's like, wow. So I took that bullshit out. And I took, a, you know, on one side of the can, on the outside of the can, it's silk. On the inside of the can, it looks like it's copper or gold or whatever, but that's just the tinning on there. Right? And I turn that to the inside so that's what you see when you're looking through the face of the watch. It looked like diamonds covered with gold. <laughs> yeah. That way. Just to make a, a profile on a picture. So yeah, I can look, I can look the part all day. Put on some nice little clothing, whatever the hell. You know, I mean, know if I'm broke. Looking rich. What a nigga really do. Really that nigga. Now you see what I'm talking about. Then the little ring I had on. It was a, a ring that I bought from um, uh there was somebody walking around. I had the little ring on his hand. They asked me for a couple of dollars to do whatever. What you got? Well, I don't fuck. I don't fuck. Well, well <laughs> okay. I said a little ring on the thing. What you want for it? I did too. I don't know. 10, 12 hours for a motherfucker. Yeah. I drilled a hole in it and set up. One was an earring. <laughs> the other one was a um, was an earring too, but it was a big old diamond, like made it. If you take a lighter, man, some bitch of milk. And it's red. But the person's finger was small, so 
I made a pinky finger ring finger. Finger ring. Pinky finger ring. <laughs> Wasn't real. Just some just just to be doing something for the social media. Mm hmm But it did. Man, I'm up to look like that. Oh, you got money on you. You got money to burn. Mm -hmm. That was just something to make. Uh, like I got that profile for my social media, which is YouTube. And then I got a uh, Instagram. And then I got a TikTok. Solid for. And then make videos like this. I come on on Facebook and make my video. And then uh, I put it on, on the YouTube. Post it up on the YouTube, whatever I'm doing. So there you go. And then sometimes I share it with my other TikTok or something. Put it on there. And none of, none of the other shit I'm getting paid for. So... <laughs> There you go. So I'm just going through the the stages uh, or whatever. I've been doing it for a minute. But they ain't giving me, they ain't shoving me, they ain't sending me no thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. I ain't got but what? 24,000. Uh, yeah, 24,000 uh, fans, subscribers, whatever. That watch my YouTube, you know. I got my little, uh, uh, I got a uh, cash app. Ain't a fucking dime on that bitch, man. Somebody tell me how it worked. I got to turn around and put money on the motherfucker or that was the purpose. I ain't got a dime, so put it, put it on the motherfucker, you know. Put it on the on the cash app, <clears throat> and what I need, <clears throat> uh, you know, I tell you, if you're trying to help me, let me know that you're trying to help me, man. What I need. Is three thousand dollars even, right? Every little penny counter, you give it to me, let me get it. You're trying to give it to me, let me get it. Now the reason I'm asking for it is is because I'm trying to get around. I had an opportunity. I've been crying for by for the last two fucking months. I went over the Where that goddamn thing at, man? I went over to uh, Lake Village. To this guy. Right? And I was sent to the workforce. Workforce of Arkansas, right? The Arkansas workforce. Now, I, I was sent first in 2020. To this place here. See that P B truck driver training school that's pine bluff truck driver uh training school now that's where i went and these are the logs <clears throat> this is the log book 
right? Do your log. Right, I fold it like that. Do your log, and this is how you do it. I'm going to show you a little bit. See? You take, you got a, 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 I don't know if you can see that or not. Right? And that's how you do it. And then over here, you put the hours and everything within the week. <clears throat> can't do no more than what 40 hours in a week and you put that down every day what you doing you're doing inspection is you driving when you went on break when you came off break how long you stayed on break no like a time clock and you use these different measurements let me see Let me see if I can make some, make this make sense for you, man. Now I went uh, in 2020. I went to Pine Bluff, right, just up the highway. All right. Is in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, right? I went there. And uh, October, and it started on the sixth. And then uh, you know they started acting funky and shit. And then on around about the twenty eighth or 29th or something like that of October, you know, they really wasn't giving me the seat time that I was supposed to have out on the road. which is a street and a highway. So I like, no, nah, no, nah, I want I want to be able to, I was on one of the back roads and I was driving. But they harass you so goddamn much, man, you know. You start driving, then all of a sudden, you know, you scratch your gear or whatever, trying to get in the next gear, right? Because you can't float them. So you're getting used to the rhythm and the timing and the synchronization of it and shit. Oh man, just just pull it up, pull it over, and and you, uh, you come up here and get in the seat. You get in the seat, and like oh, so I don't say nothing. I just park the vehicle, right, engage the brakes, choo, choo, unbuckle the seat belt, get out from under there, and go sit in the berth and watch the rest of them. And from that time on, you had three or four damn students. They making the same mistake, but he ain't taking the time with me like he's doing them, right? But they want to yeah, throw me up in front. Of, no, you ain't gonna get my ass whooped. I uh, know. Uh, I might seem like I'm going along with it, but nah. -uh. I've been in those positions before. Be a lot more confident than that when you step in there than just, yeah, I do it. Get up there and fail miserably. Fuck to no. In other words, don't do it until you just know you can really pass that motherfucking test, man. You, you that's 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 the name of the game. So if I ain't getting my ass on that wheel and you, you know you're harassing the motherfucker, then ain't nothing I can do. We'll go tell somebody. And that's what I did. And I said, fuck that, man. So then they, they conserved my money to go to another one, right? So then I was supposed to attend uh, Diesel, Diesel Driving Academy in Little Rock. I made a, a, a video. Uh, and sent it to him. That day was a trip, see? Let me tell you something, man. My high blood pressure was, my blood pressure was, uh, was on high. And my neck was extra fat because I was, I was, I have to admit, I was overweight. I was like 260-something pounds. 
Now I'm down to 208 pounds. I had to do a sleep study. Right? Get all that shit fixed. And I didn't think nothing was wrong, right? I really didn't think. I was in denial a little bit. So I was like, damn. All right. And I went and I did the study. And then in 2021, and then uh, Pops went on to glory. And then we went through that. And then Mom and everything, man. And then uh, uh, her going through, you know, widowship and everything. And us losing the loved one, you know. Well, I wouldn't say losing, but he gained his wings and he went on right to the up room to the best place in ever. Okay. Off this earth. So then I'm thinking about trying it again. That's why I tried it again. That's when 2021, 2022, somewhere like that, I took the... Uh, DOT physical tried to and the motherfucking blood pressure and all that shit so then got that squared away by this time now I'm trying to take care of moms and everything right you know you, you if you love them you tell anybody else to go to hell I don't give a damn what it is you love your moms or your dads and them you tell the rest of the world to go to hell with no conscience go to hell Straight up. And uh, then uh, she gained her wings. and So then this Trinity thing popped up and I went there. And then they pretty much played the same fucking role that the Pine Bluff did at the end of it. So I went back and complained to them, to that woman just made a complaint. Maybe she can say something, you know. Or save my money and let me go to another. The first thing came out of my mind, we can't just keep sending you to everywhere. What do you mean? I'm just telling you what's the problem. As long as my money, right? Oh, no, we already gave him the money. He already paid him. I'm like, well, shit. You already paid him. And most of the time, fucking around with them over there. The weather, due to the weather, if he ain't have no classes, fuck, he ain't have no classes. That ain't on me. You know, get my money back. So now we got to go through a goddamn grievance from, from me to end for a work village or whatever the fuck it is. They full of shit. By the time they get done fucking around, man, it'd be two goddamn years from now, man. I ain't got that kind of time. So for me to get what I need done, man, you know, I need a small help in hand. If somebody got a truck, you know. You got tractor and trailer and you LLC. You understand me? You can do whatever you want to do. I just need that truck. I talked to them people. They said, man, yeah, we ain't fucked up, man. Come up here and run your test. You're supposed to. You ain't never ran it, but you ain't came before us. But if you come on up here, we've been waiting on you. Just bring your a truck that's legal and it's operable. Ain't no... Ain't nothing wrong with ain't leaking, ain't no lights missing, all that stuff, man, you know. You can take the test, man. So that's where I'm at. So, uh, in order for me to get that done, I, just, I need about three, three little funky thousand dollars, you hear me? I need in a hurry. And need be, man. Look, I ain't fucked up. I, I ain't just looking for free. We can talk about it. You know what I mean? I just need to invest. If that's if that makes a, a make it sound any better to your ear, then no, nah, I ain't look. I ain't exactly looking for nobody just give me nothing. I'm willing to make it. You know, work some out. You know, invest, make this happen. I get it to popping, bam. Easy peasy. 
lemon squeezy. You dig what I'm talking about? As they say in the loop, I'll get that right back to you. I promise you. I promise that. When a person says, I promise you, a motherfucker really stay out of the world when they say that. I promise. When they say, I promise. That's the same as a pinky. That's the same as double dog, you dig? Real talk. Get that to you. So, anyway, let me finish. All right, I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> this is what you use with the, along with this book. When you're in here, you make your ledger lines right here <clears throat> in your measurements. You dig. And you go along here and you and and it all means something, right? It's a little bit different. Just a little bit. So you keep your line straight. Right? And you go here, well. Right? Right? And then you go from here to here, and that shows you the hours. You do your measurements up here. Then down here, it's going to show you the hours where you started and you finished. And what you were doing, right? And where you was at. And then over here, you know, every day, that shows you what you've been doing. Right? And over here, and then it tells you your calculation once you add them up. See? And right here, it basically tells you, gives you form about what to do. See? So, person been putting this together. Once you get this in, get this in your head, you don't forget it. So the deal is, is yeah, I can drive those trucks. I can drive a manual truck. I don't care from it. Uh, if it's uh, uh, automatic, but the problem is, is when it gets to that point, then they want to play the game. I'm not gonna go there. You know, I ain't no. It's just like anything. If you're playing football or basketball, you make your ass to goddamn practice. On the weekend, it's the goddamn game. The plays are supposed to work no matter what. But you don't wait to try to perform the shit in the game. You practice the shit at practice time, on the practice field, on the gridiron. You know, you don't wait till it's the game and you're going to throw somebody up in front of the examiner. No, you go through the procedure. That's the purpose of them giving you the information you need to know so you can go over it and, and it be routine for you. Then it's no problem. And you can just explain the shit how it go, you know. Step back and you look at the goddamn vehicle, man. Right? See, is it lopsided and leaning to one side or the other? Could be suspension. Could be the tires of inflation. You know, one of the, the uh, when you say uh, suspension is either one of the damn uh, springs are busted up under there or something. You know. Or it could be the weight ain't, you know, is not centered. In the vehicle. In the trailer like it's supposed to be. Right? That's what you look at. Also, you can look at ground and see if there's any puddles, anything spills, any wires, any belt, anything hanging. It's the job. Then you start up here at the clearance lights. Right? Make sure they all match the same color. You know, and all that ain't busted and broke up. Then you look in the, in the damn wind, uh, windshield and make sure they ain't, it ain't cracked and got a whole bunch or 
some spot in around there is leaking, right? Then you're looking right here at, at these damn little little windshield wipers. See, the windshield wipers dry or rotten or they old or is it cracked or is the thing wobbling all around? Is it proper tension, you know? Then you go to the front headlights and the lenses, you know. It's, you know, you suppose it's got to be clear so you can see down the road. Ain't full of moisture, dirt, or whatever else. It's there clean, right? And the signal lights are of the color they're supposed to be, right? Correct color, right? And your marker lights is in there. And then look and make sure you got high beams and you got a low beam. You got a low beam and you got a high beam. Whatever's on, on the drive side is on the passenger side, right? And that go for tires and all that stuff. Now, you go through all this stuff because it take a minute. But these are essential because that's what makes the damn vehicle. Those are the important parts of it. Otherwise, you leave that garbage-ass truck sitting over there, man. Don't drive that fucking uh, heap of junk. You motherfucker leave down the road to kill you, man, shit. Or kill somebody else. Other people. You get me? There you go, man. Then you go from there, go into the hood. You mentioned the mirrors that's on the hood. All right, and then you go right over there to the passenger side, and you start talking about the things that's over there on that side. Then you bring your happy ass back over here on the driver's side, and you start talking about everything that's on the driver's side that you're supposed to talk about. The suspension and all that stuff and the wheels and all that, everything's identical on the other goddamn side of it. As far as the tires and on the front end, they can't be no re-wrap. They got to be straight up tires, period. Brand stuff, new. And filled to the manufacturing specification, which is 100 PSI, right? And it must have a proper tread depth, right? Then you go through all that other stuff. See, this it takes time. So once you get it in you, once you get it in you, there ain't no problem. You just run it down to the man, what you looking at, what you doing, what you inspecting. And you really inspecting this shit. You really looking at this shit. You the one got to drive this motherfucker. You understand me? Wait, no, let me look and see. You know, is this belt? What is wrong with it? Oh, is this, is this about a three quarters? Okay, okay. All that, man. Yeah, take him along with you so you know what, and tell him what you're looking at. <clears throat> Anywho, man, and get through that. Now it's time uh, from the outside up under the hood, all that to the fifth wheel rear and then you go inside the cab look at the door and the trim inside the door make sure the door ain't raggly the hinges work clam the door open the door with latches and work like it's supposed to handle stairs fuel tank depth tank battery step ladder catwalk drive shaft the back of the <laughs> of the sleeper cab, you know, the tailpipe muffler to go to some bit, the glad hands, the uh, 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 power line that goes to it to electricity source. God damn it, pissed me off. And then you got dual ties on the drive. Axle. The both of them can be the drive axles, right? Because you got the drive shaft, then you got another drive shaft from that axle. Run that one in the back. Usually, it's just one or two of them. One of them. Sometimes it's do they both they both doing the same shit, the same fucking time. So there you go, because you need it. Then you got that goddamn. One. In there, as your uh, torque bar. So when the wheels move around, the torque bar keeps it steady. Instead of it moving around, it moves the whole frame. 
Make sure that the frame ain't uh, cracked. There ain't no illegal wells. Now, you got one in the front of the, the, the Joker. And usually it's on the drive side in the front to the axle. On the passenger side. Then it goes from the axle to the uh, passenger side of the frame on the rear axle. Then you go to talking about uh, the fifth wheel is a uh, bracket and you then your mount. Then you talk about your pins in there that's holding the fifth wheel. Then you talk about the release uh, locking jaws and all that stuff up under there. All the hardware and quite naturally rear got the brakes and everything but then you got your butted up tires right? So, you know, it don't need to be, they supposed to be just like that, sandwiched together. There ain't supposed to be no space in between there, no no light or nothing like that in there. They got to be together like that. See? Same thing on the trailer. So, you go to rocking and rolling, you tell every goddamn PC part, if he ain't got time, well, I'll wait on you to go get another inspector. Because I'm going to tell you and point out every part and tell you what it does. And, what, and then the brake cup, the brake liner, a.k.a. brake shoes. And, you know, whether or not they're excessively worn. You got tools to take the the temperature. <laughs> but, no, it's the thread depth on the tires. And the air pressure in the tire from the valves. I mean, what's the broke? Crack or missing. Brim bent or nothing. So there we go. See, this is what I'm talking about. Once you get it in you, you can't quit talking about it. You're going to make that sound a bit sick. You're going to give me the points for them all. You just don't want to hear my voice no more. I don't. Either way, partner, I'm going to get it to you. I, I, I intend to win. You dig what I'm talking about? You got to perform all of this stuff. Start talking about apron and the uh, the uh, uh, kingpin and the shank with the locking bar uh, jaws go into and the reverse lights and the reflectors up in there up on the corner of the cabin in the back and then you got service lights that's there mine it ain't busted and broke up and all that kind of crap then you come on right on come right on back to look upside this, this trailer it's got some running lights at the top and you look down is it all busted the tone rip rivers missing and all that stuff and then look down the side of this joker and what do you see that tape and all that stuff man listen you repeat it, and you just repeat it, and you just keep telling them everything like a tattletale. And then you look up under this damn apron and make sure back up in the fourth, fifth wheel that it's sandwiched like that, properly greased. Got a grease in there, the grease, because that's what it's going to do, just like that. With all that weight on it, you understand that fifth wheel. And move up and down like that, but that's just to go out to, to get the trailer. The, the apron don't, the trailer don't move, right? That's the, the, the tractor bouncing all around this way back and forth like that. It's the front of the trailer or tractor, and this is where your fifth wheel. So it swivel back and forth no matter what, and it turns this way or that way. So... That's the reason why you got to make sure everything's all right that way, right? Then you got a bunch of ribs that go down along this trailer. You look up under there and make sure ain't nothing missing. Then you look up under there and make sure the floor ain't got no hole in it where something just fall out. Then your air brake lines go all the way back there as they properly hanging up under there. And before we get to any further, you got to look and make sure that your uh, landing gear is, is on there straight. It just ain't hanging by one little boat or something or it's moving around, wobbling around, and the handle 
You know, it's got to be sitting up there properly, locked in place where it's supposed to rest at, right? All that, and then the foot, not one foot missing, and it's a peg on the other side. No. That trailer ain't no good. It's got to have a pad on the bottom of it. Like a foot or a shoe, just like that. When you wank it up, wank it around, there you go. And then you head back to your tandems back there. And you tell them what you see. You know, your tandem is another. Uh, you can move them around. It's got a peg in there to hold that whole plate in there. Slide up and down. It's dual wheel, just like on the trailer and on the rear, the drive axle. There's two axles there, but ain't nothing to propel them. Those are the trailers that drag wherever you go. But that whole unit will slide on and off. Okay? You got a handle, right? Make sure that works and it's operable. It's got brakes and everything on there, brake chambers, and slack adjusters. Same as on that track, except for it don't have airbags. On the uh, rear, see, that's what you get to talking, man. And once you get this in your mind, it's no problem. You, you, you tell them what, you tell them what, to, what you're touching every damn thing on this truck. Just look, you tell them what the fuck it is on this truck, what you need. This is what you need, so you have no problem. They want to take all day, let's take all day. <laughs> as long as you mark it down that we that it has been uh inspected See, you understand then inside this cab now you're going to chalk these wheels up what you want to do right but chances are if you chalk the wheels you got to get back out of the truck your three point contact of course in and out of this truck and pull them chalk wheels out so you when you do your in in cab inspection and you check in these you go go from the brakes which we went last time i told you about that what you do park on level ground right or chalk these wheels then you're going to safe you're going to safe start this vehicle if it's a manual transmission. You're going to put your foot on the clutch. Let it out. Put your foot with the brake is already, parking brake is already on. So you're going to make sure the vehicle's in neutral. It's a manual. And then you start this engine up, right? You can cycle it up if you want. You know what I'm saying? You cycle it on up. Okay. You can rev it up to 10, between 10 and 15 RPM, right? And that's going to fill the air tanks to govern the cutoffs, which is 120, 140 PSI, correct? All right. Now, what you're going to do is once you get there, it's a right? Now. Turn the engine off, and you let off this clutch, right? The wheels are chalked. It's on level ground. Now, you can put this vehicle in first gear if you want to, in low gear. It, the engine is shut off. So now you let off, and it's in gear, or the wheels are chalked. Good thing to do is just chalk the wheels. Even if you have to get out. Just ensure that you're making the folks know what you know what you're doing. Then you want to turn the key switch to on position. Then first thing you want to do after that is disengage both tractor and trailer brakes. Then for one whole fat funky minute, you just put your foot on the brake. Talk to them. 
You can ask him, instructor, are you keeping time or is it my keeping time? You can have your own before a minute. You know. And then uh while I'm looking here, waiting for that one minute, I have my mirrors, my windshield, with my other mirrors, they're all clean. No obstruction, no legal stickers, no nothing broken and they're clean. Just so that he understands that you pay attention, right? Now, I'm going to let my foot off and he say, see here on my gauges, it shows that I lost no less, no more than four PSI. Then, I'm going to proceed on. And to a 60 PSI, 55 PI, my low warning, low pressure light will come on and buzzer will sound. And there you go. So now I'm going to continue on to fan my brakes off in between 45 and 20 PSI. My trailer and tractor brakes will come on. Pop, pop, right? Okay. Service brakes are working properly. Now, you're going to go to your in-cab inspection. And the first thing you're going to do is reach your funky ass over to the seat belt. And you're going to pull it and you're going to look at it and say it's not frayed, no cuts. Or, you know, it's not dry rotten or anything. So then you... You put it in and latch it, and then you unlatch it and latch it. All right, it works properly, and the seat belt is adjusted to me, the driver. Then you want to go to your fire extinguisher. So you get this out of the way. Fire extinguisher is the proper one for this truck, the ABC. It's regulated to a proper field, right? Also, it has a safety pin on it. It's properly mounted in this cap right here. Three triangles, emergency triangles. They're red and yellow or amber and colored. Either way, you can sit them out there and they stand alone. You don't have to hold them or you don't need no special kickstand for them to stand to sit up where they need to go directional that means if somebody's coming in you can direct them off from the hazard then you mentioned the fuses right come on you got to rock them to sleep don't let it seem like it's all there to rock you to sleep but hell that's the job that's for every amperage in that vehicle that's used right right now but do it one more again press the button to show that so both windows are working the seals is sealed properly is not loosening walking all around both windows past the door and the driver's door then you adjust the mirrors to you the driver to me the driver clean not broken nothing missing And then, uh, yeah, no stickers to obstruct. You say that too now. Windshield clean, not broken, not cracked. No illegal stickers, nothing obstructing my view. Not seal is perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect seal. It's not leaking or nothing. All right. Now, what you want to do is you want to. You can either do this first or you can do it second. But you blow your horn. That's the city horn. Beep. Then your highway horn. Honk. Right? Now, you put your foot back on. Safe start is in. Because you got to turn these gauges on and everything anyway. Make sure it's in neutral. Now, this is the part where you should have been out there and took the chuck out from under the wheels when you did the brake test. Otherwise, you put it in safe, neutral. 
start this engine. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, cycle your gauges to make sure that they're working. And what you're going to look for is your ABS first thing. Then you start the engine. All right, now, oil pressure is rapidly. Cooling level is going to be uh, gradually to normal operating temperature. Then you got your primary and secondary fuel tank, or not fuel tank, but your air gauges. We're going to just let them roll for a minute until... They get where they're supposed to go. And then, you're going to mention your depth gauge that's on there. You're going to mention your voltage meter that's on there. Okay? So you got coolant, oil, depth, voltage, uh, ABS, Second, uh, primary and secondary air gauges all working properly. And since it's on, it's a ka -choo, right? That's the governor cutoff switch to 120, 140 PSI, right? Now, you want to turn on your <clears throat> defrost. Works on all three uh, speeds. And then up under the heater, up under all three speeds, it's working, right? Your fan speed, right? All right. So you cut that off. And then you just push your four-way flashes. Okay, they're working properly, as indicated, right? Then you do turn on your headlights. Low beam, high beam, right? Then your uh, left and right blanket, right? Left to right to upright. And working properly is indicated, right? All right, now. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to check is a tug test. And what you're going to do is you're going to disengage the tractor that's the yellow one you push that in and you engage pull that red one out for the trailer you give that a tug let off put it in first gear and let off the clutch a little bit right and and those serves that brake those service brakes are working reverse it disengage the trailer brakes and engage the tractor brakes you give it a tug so you let off the clutch slowly in. okay now engage or disengage both tractor and trailer brakes and you let off and you want to go up to five miles per hour just let off the clutch and let it roll okay now you hit the brakes clutch and the brake at the same time steering wheel did not pull left or right right and as a matter of fact, there's no more than two inch slack in my steering. So that means the brakes have been are proper, you know, adjusted properly. And there's no more than two inches or ten degrees of slack in my steering. Okay, now you wanna pull or engage tractor and trailer brake. Bang. Remember, the tractor is the yellow one. That's the parking brake. And the red one is the trailer. You pull them out. Okay? Then you put your vehicle back in neutral. And uh, you turn the engine off. Right? Then you let off the clutch. Right? 
brakes outside. A, B, and C inspection. This truck, vehicle, tractor, and trailer is concluded. Now, if I missed anything and you and you was paying attention to whatever I was doing, you tell me whether I fell or passed on it right now. It's up to you. I gave it a go, but I ran through it real quick. You understand me? But I done touched and tampered everything that's on this truck. For real. Except for I didn't tell you about up under the hood, right? Now, I can go back and tell you what I didn't say. But I will say in front of an instructor. You go under the hood, you're going to look for the wash, windshield washer reservoir and look for the hoses that go to it. Make sure it's not cut. No bulges, no excessive wear or no hardware missing. And the cap is on tight and it's filled to operating level, right? To the proper operating level. Then you go over here. Or you go over here to your left further down, which is your exhaust pipe. And you're going to look and see is there any soot, any ash, any traces of leak there. Then you're going to go to your alternator and you're going to look and see is it properly mounted, the wires hanging, or any of them loose. And then it's belt driven. Then your water pump is gear driven. It's got a hose to it. But back to that belt again. Only three quarters of slack in it. Back to that water pump, uh, water pump again, properly mounted and it's not broken. No parts are missing. Then you got your hoses, it's clamped, so they're hardware there. It's not bolts, it's not cut, and it's not leaking, and no hardware is missing. Then you wobble your funky ass back around over on the driver's side. Could have mentioned it over there. And that is. Frame has no cracks. First thing you want to say is frame has no cracks on either side. Before you go back over to the driver's side, unless you want to mention that again. But you can mention it just so he know you know what you're talking about. Because there's one over on this side. Brake hoses. Brake chamber. Push rod. Slack adjuster. And and uh, it's coupled, and all this hardware is there. Nothing missing, nothing bent, all broke. Reservoir, cooling reservoir. First thing you want to attack. And this hose, it's clear in color where you can see that it's properly filled to normal operation uh, levels, right? And the cap is on tight. It has a whole well to it. It's not broke. It's not bold. It's not leaking. It's not cut. They have clamps. They're all there and no hardware missing. They're all present, right? Come on, you might as well. I know you don't want to, but you're going to. And then you go to your power steering pump. Your power steering pump uh, is cap is present and it's on tight. So you got holes to it, it's not leaking, it's not missing. Clamps the hardware. Then, you want to go to your little oil dipstick. Pull that out, it's present, okay? Wipe it off. Stick it back in there, pull it back out again, and it's filled to proper. 
operating level, right? And then your field port. This cap is present, it's on proper and tight, and it's not missing. Then you go to your air compressor, which is properly mounted. It's gear driven and properly mounted. It's not broken and no cursing, no hardware missing. It has hoses and everything so that's not leaking, no audible leaks in it. That's because of air. That's what it would leak. That's where the leaks is for but for the uh coolant and power steering, yeah, it's not cut. So no leaks. It's not leaking, you can see it. Then you go to your steel rod. Again, there's only 10 degrees slack in it. No more than 2 inches. And it goes down here. The gearbox connects to your gearbox. The gearbox got a coupling on it. All the bolts are present. And nuts and washers are present. None missing. It's not bent. It's not broken. Right? And then your gearbox is properly mounted to the frame. All the hardware there are present, and it's not cracked, and it's not leaking. Then you want to go straight to the pitman arm that's connected to the drag link. That's connected to the upper arm steering arm. That's connected to the tie rod that goes to the other tire over on the other end. Other side of the truck. Okay, the bushes are there. They're not missing. It's not no excessive wear. The castle nuts are there, and carter pins are present on all spots that there's supposed to be a castle nut and a carter key. All right. Then you want to attack the suspension. which are your uh, uh, your uh, uh, your springs, your leaf springs. They're not cracked, not broken. None out of line. They're not missing any. And uh, it's two U-boats. All this hardware are present. And it's properly mounted to your uh, front drive axle. You go on the other side of that truck. You have a hanger to the front. And you have a hanger to the rear. They are present. Properly mounted to the frame. All hardware is there. Nothing missing. Not broken. Not missing. Not broken. Not cut. Not bent. No shiny metal parts. Then you want to look at that air hose. The air hose is coming over here to that brake chamber. There's no cuts, no bulges, no audible, audible leaks to it. It has a slack adjuster. And, and it has a, a, a coupling. And you push rod. Also, your clamp that's on your uh, brake chamber are there and present. Not bent, broke, or missing. That means for them two pins and a little carter key. Carter key there. And it must not be any more than one inch of slack with the brakes released. Now you want to look at that brake drum, right? No cracks, no illegal welds. Then you want to look at the liner, a.k.a. brake shoes. There's no grease or no oil in the dragon, and it's no less than uh, of a quarter of an inch of shoe or liner there. All right. Then you slap the inside of the tire all the way around. No abrasions, no bulges, no cuts. Properly seated on this 
rim. The rim has no cracks, no illegal wells on the inside from what you can see. Right? Then your depth thread, your uh, tread. Again, it's four thirty seconds of an inch. That's where you would take a depth of tread gauge and measure the depth on the th on the uh, treads. And that tire is always got to be a brand new tire when you put on. Can't be recaps at all. Right? Equally worn. Then on the outside, same thing. No bulges, no cracks, no cuts, no excessive wear. Properly mounted to that rim. And that rim itself has no rust trails, no shiny bits, and no cracks, no nothing, no illegal wells. Properly mounted, and all lugs and bolts are present. Inside, you have a uh, uh, axle seal, front axle seal, and it has a cap to cover up. You take that cap off, you can see that it is filled to uh, the proper level, operation level for that seal. It's not leaking. All hardware is there, not broke, not missing, no shiny bits, no rust trails, anything to indicate cracks. Same thing on the other side. You can be looking. That's why I say you might as well go ahead and look. You know. The same principle for your drive wheels and tires. Same thing except for there can be two 30 seconds of an inch. And they can have recaps on them. That and the trailer. Okay. And look inside that rim. There's no debris, nothing, no oil, and no grease, nothing like that. 137, uh, uh, one quarter of an inch is a quarter of an inch of thickness on this seal, aka brake seal. And then, uh, let's see, brake chambers are present, hoses are present, they're none missing, the clamps are not missing, they're not broke, bent, no audible leaks, right, slack is just the same principle. Now, I once heard from somebody else that on there I believe on the trailer it can be no less than two inches with the brakes release. I only know it can only be one inch of slack in it with the brakes release. That's all I know until I check and see any difference. All right, now, that's how you got to do it. We went back there because I want you to know that I was rusting a little bit to get through it. But I know also know the parts I didn't speak on and those are the parts that you do speak on, right? When you're in front of them because you don't want to get bored, you don't want to rush through it and not tell them. And even if you say that concluded, you still until he tell you it's over it ain't over it. You can go back if you remember. Just like next thing next is still you didn't get the man you didn't you didn't get him to assist you with the lights when I was speaking to get out. Get your ass out. <laughs> get your ass out, go look at the light. Is my high beams working? Is my low beams working? God damn it. How about my four-way flashes? Get around the motherfucking side. Go and look. You can't know. You, is my brakes working? Bitch, it's my brakes. How about my reverse? 
Don't be scarred. Get your ass up under there. Get the fuck up under there. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's where you need to chalk under the wheel. <laughs> Just in case he's scarred. <laughs> You go hit the brakes, like bitch. You can't know if you up unless you up under that licking. <laughs> now just think, if you had somebody that humans, but it'd take you serious. Oh hell no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you get done, you feel like a motherfucker. <laughs> hell no, man, motherfucker, crazy. Unless that son of a bitch in the truck, I ain't like fuck. Now you be cussing like a summer moment. Like a Seminole, man, I'm telling you. Be cussing like a a, 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 a Florida Seminole boy on the football field. I'm telling you right now. Bye. No. But anyhow, I mean, that's the shit that you got to go through. That's the shit you got to go through. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> oh, babe, everything good. Hey, babe, babe, everything good, babe. I don't want you no more. Oh, you don't know what I've been through. <laughs> you don't know what I've been through. You can't quit me. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> yeah, man, I won't tell you. I don't want you no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And stand on that shit. I don't want you no more. You go to the Aku plant. And she pull away from you. And like, you, 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 you touch on him, man. She like, mm, like, ain't yours no more. Right? Uh-huh. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. This motherfucker. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> Dang, I'll chase that. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that shit don't work, no, ladies. It don't work no more. <laughs> it don't work no more. It don't care <laughs> what you've been through. It's all no fucking dildo. I don't want no fucking rose. I don't no vibrator. She wants a long, black, thick. You know the rest, baby. You know what you want. <laughs> you know what you want. <laughs> yeah, that's what she want. And there ain't no turning her back when she had a taste. When she done had a taste of somewhere else, boy. I don't care what you've been through. <laughs> you, you don't know what I've been through. I don't care what you've been through. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hurt your whole big funky feeling. Shoot your ego out the sky. <laughs> Real hard. Yeah. Well, I can do it bad by myself. All you hear is her driving away. Skin! Gone somewhere. <laughs> Shit. You know. Only other thing is she just gonna press you to make you try to hear it. A striker or something. So she call him Popo on your funky ass, right? Try to get you out of the house so she can have a whole house to the nick. So they can continue whatever they doing when you ain't around. Yes, sir. And that's how it goes down. Straight up. So now, I hope I made y'all understand. Man, I need a little bit of help. If nothing else, man, if you got a truck and a trailer and you're an LLC, look out for a brother, man. You dig? And you in this area? Come on, I ain't scared of you. You heard me? 
Help a brother out, man. Can a brother just get down? For real. It's all I ask of you. <laughs> Where have you heard that before? It's all I ask of you. I said, you know, I ain't trying. To, I ain't really just asking for you to so I can play for your money or something. I'm talking about making investment, invest in me. You dig what I'm saying? Help me out. Help me out. I'll come back to you in ten for baby. Trust me. It's like the bird man, invest in something. You dig what I'm saying? If y'all take your little pennies and you put it in and if you trust this Bitcoin and all the rest of this bullshit, man, you know. I'm asking just for a, a, a mustard seed of that. Trust you got in a Bitcoin. You know? Because, you know, if I got running and I leap over that hurdle and pretty soon I'm stretching it out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I kid you not. You fly past the man you were supposed to give the baton to and keep riding and <laughs> Boy, I'm running this whole race, boy. But you like that? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> Just so your ass can, yeah. So you can be ahead of that one. Just keep it moving. Feel me? That's where I met y'all. I thank y'all for y'all time this evening. And I think I'll do this before I go. It ain't gonna be too much. Not too much. Just a little bit. Wow. How does it feel? <laughs> but I'm signing off. This is Mo Love in the Man Cave on the Delta. My base, my way. Just asking for a hand up, not a hand out. You know, invest in me. You know, let's keep the hood going, baby. You know how it go. On hood, <clears throat> if that's what you want to put, I know how it works. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. That's what I'm about. You hear me? And for y'all that didn't know, you can holler at Ernest Franklin. He could tell you all these 23 years where I've been, baby. Right here in the rock. Stop the violence program right up in Little Rock and his number is 501 563 5400 they all know who I am I'm Limo 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 I saw you guys say Limo <laughs> Limo oh Limo they're gonna tell you I'm that nigga man get it signing out now how that